Figureheads, Jeff with Gear Report here at the uh, Gear Report headquarters. We've got a few guests with us. I say guests, they're part of the Gear Report team. So this is uh, episode two of this week at Gear Report, where at least during the uh, the epidemic where so many people are trapped in their houses, we're going to try to come in uh, every Friday evening and talk about reviews that we have recently published that you may not have seen and things we're working on that are coming up in the near future. So I've invited the team. Uh, we got four of us here now. We may have some other people coming and going over the course of this hour long broadcast to pop in and, and say, hey, what have you been working on? What's coming up on your report? And, and what have we reviewed recently? So let's go around the room real quick and do some uh, real quick introductions. Trey, if you want to kick off with your little 10 second uh, who you are and why you're here. I am Trey with Ghost Tactical and I am a former Marine that does mostly firearms and uh, firearm related gear reviews for your report. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Yeah, thanks for being here. JJ. Hey uh, guys, this is JJ with Gear Report, and uh, you guys have seen me with in the channel and a whole bunch of the reviews and, and things uh, along the way. Uh, I've been one of the uh, first instigators uh, with Jeff uh, of doing reviews for outdoor gear and a whole bunch of different stuff uh, going back about what six years already. So, so yeah, something yeah. like that. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Read this the first time we've. Uh, seen each other as much as we talked and you've written a few articles but why don't you introduce yourself and uh and tell us what you're here to talk about this evening yes sir uh, my name's reed i'm with dirty Bee customs um self-proclaimed hum humvee guy uh i was a marine uh for about five years I spent about seven years in violent crime in atlanta pd and uh i was a designated marksman in afghanistan for a year um i'm uh i'll probably be talking about some firearm stuff maybe maybe just Kick, pig, piggyback enough of you guys and hopefully bringing up some of my things I'm working on with my latest project. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for being here. And uh, let me mute that one. Excellent. All right. So uh, this week in Gear Report, let's see, what have we published this week? Uh, Trey, did you publish anything this week? I don't remember. Uh, I don't think I've published this yeah. week. I, I put a couple out last week, but I don't think I've, I've got several yeah, I items coming in the next week or so, which I'll have some reviews out here pretty soon. Yeah. Okay, good. So we'll, we'll get to the upcoming stuff. I'm scrolling through. It looks like Clover did a few things, uh, but uh, oh, I know what I was thinking. You did the editing on the uh, Peltor Sport Tactical. I did. I edited two. that. Yes, I did. Yes, you did. So welcome to the editing team. All right. And welcome the to the dark tactical side. Virus huh? has joined us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Clover, good to see you. Salutations, gentlemen. Yes. Uh, we just did introduction. Hey, so uh, so you can say hi real quick before we dive in. Hey, it's Chris with Clover Tech. Yeah. You know, um, video reviews and other farm related content, including writing for Gear Report. Absolutely. Yeah, and as far as you know, we love you for it. <laughs> it's yeah. a love-hate thing, I know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, let's see. Are you guys seeing the screen here? Yes, yeah, sir. Affirmative. Nope. Sure. Get out of the way. Get the gear report one back up here. So, yeah. just uh, let's just do a real quick look at what we've published recently. Uh, did we talk? We talked already about the Glock 44 that you did, Clover. Mm -hmm. How to be prepared in a quarantine that we talked about last week. The coronavirus stories, honestly, I kind of lost motivation and stopped updating that. Um, Those were great, though, man. More, I'm, I may do some more if I get inspired. But, I, I, think you, uh, I think you have to because you started awesome with those. It was really fun reading through yeah. and stuff. So, so yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll pick that back up tomorrow. But uh, honestly, I started feeling guilty. Like, you know, there are people sick and I, I don't want to keep joking about it when we need to be serious. But I'm, I'm coming to the conclusion that, that I, I'm starting to think this is all really overblown. So I may start joking about it again. 
yeah, yeah. I mean, just as long as you keep it as a as a joke thread and stuff, and still put the reverence w- where it needs to be, that there are people sick and stuff. But you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you we'll hear see- anything about what they were? There was a gentleman that was sending out a message that was related to what to do and not to do if you do get infected with it. Did y'all see that? Um, no. mass messages went out. His inf- well, the, the sources I can't attest to, unfortunately. But um, it was off of a radio broadcast, and the gentleman that was on the radio broadcast was had a connection with a man who's working directly with patients in uh, intensive care that have been affected with cor- or the, the COVID-19 virus. And uh, ale- allegedly, they, they want you to stay away from ibuprofen because it makes the virus 10 times worse. Um, yeah, I've heard that. I've seen it a number of places. I shared it with my family, and my father said, oh, that was debunked two weeks ago. So oh, really? I just I, heard well, about yeah, it. So I don't I know. know how much about it was true or not. Well, I can well, tell I'm you not, that. Not, yeah, I can I'm tell you that on the uh, in the in the pharmacy aisle, ibuprofen is the only thing on the shelf. <laughs> so yeah. some, some people are still buying it. I mean, buying the hey, buying the pharmacy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. So um, you know, we've chosen in my house to say better safe than sorry, and. Uh, uh, one of my one of my teenagers is having some jaw issues and is taking ibuprofen to reduce inflammation. And we said, you know what, you can take something else for a while. Um, right. We're we're just going to go off of it just in case. So right. yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see. It's a better safe than sorry thing. Um, but I, I heard the same thing. I heard a number ten x that people who were on ibuprofen, the virus exploded at about a 10, 10 times the rate it did in people who were not taking ibuprofen. Well, wasn't uh, there exactly. something, wasn't there something to do with NSAIDs as well? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Ibuprofen is, is the only one that I had heard mentioned, but, uh, but uh, yeah, it could be others. I don't know. Yeah. yeah so uh, let's see. Also published uh, last week's uh, Show Us Your Humvee we've seen. Starting uh, the stuff since the last episode, I think we've got this uh, recovery tips for swimmers. That I found ironic that we've got a, a new writer who's come in is going to do a couple articles a month in the swimming area, even though all the pools in the country are closed. So <laughs> we're going to get the content out there. Right. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's driving me nuts at my house because I have three competitive swimmers in my house and they're used to swimming every day. So they're going nuts. I compete with swimming every time I jump in the pool. <laughs> right. <laughs> is that to keep from drowning or? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. My WSQ scores were not good, dude. <laughs> neither, neither were mine, man. I don't, don't feel bad. Yeah. Don't feel bad. The closest thing yeah. to good water training I got was Humvee dumps. So, yeah. <laughs> Where they attempt to drown you in a Humvee. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, another recent article that I'd love for people to share around that uh, may be of some value. Uh, whether whether this virus is overblown or not, there is a pressing need for medical masks, surgical masks, and I've collected a variety of different uh, patterns and recipes and how tos off the internet, and some tips and and uh, list of stuff to to get to do it and publish that to try to help people out. So, uh, my wife has been making those. Uh, in fact, I mailed a, a care package with a bunch in it in them uh, yesterday. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, uh, one of the brands that has uh, provided some gear for us to use uh, along the reviews, uh, Coltac is uh, manufacturing a whole bunch of uh, masks now, from what I understand. Right. So, That's a good point. Yeah. So, Dustin was posting some things where they're doing gowns and masks. And- yeah. Yeah, that's so, pretty so cool. What one of the you know soft products, I guess, if you want to call it, uh, they use fabric for the shooting bags and the uh, those shooting accessories, and uh, they have kind of gone sideways and started doing the the masks for for the and the gowns, like Jeff said, for for the medicine uh, people that are and the people yeah, that might yeah. be affected by this. So so that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I agree. Cool. Hey, thanks for bringing that up. I'd forgotten that. Yeah. Keep in mind, these masks are meant to protect others from you, not necessarily yes. protect you from others. Yeah, that, blue, uh, uh, if you double layer fabric to your face, that can prevent you from potentially infecting someone else. Yeah. But you yeah. also got to remember, if you're going to use it as a form of protection, 
that your eyes and any other pretty much permeable surface on your body were to collect the droplets from the virus, from a cough, from any other right. sneeze, from whatever, that you could yeah. still be infected. So you, had to, you, need, you need to think about protecting your eyes as well. Yeah. 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 Good point. Now, isn't Blue, uh, Blue Alpha Gear doing something with masks and things too? It wouldn't surprise me. I haven't yeah. heard Yeah, anything. I heard it's something possible. about that. But I, I, I don't know. But I heard some. I saw a post on that maybe on Instagram or something. Yeah. No, but that's pretty cool that a lot of the manufacturers from from secondary, um, you know, it, items that do sewing or 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 the uh, you know shooting bags are getting into the the helping out as much as they can. Yeah. This absolutely. isn't necessarily a, a gear thing, but I saw on ESPN today that there is a company that produces baseball uniform jerseys. Okay. And they're using the material that they're instead of producing jerseys right now, they're producing one million masks and one million uh, gowns out wow. of the baseball jersey material. So that's kind of cool. They're oh, doing wow. that. That's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. That's Some of y'all cool. probably have uh, net gaiters laying around. Um, yeah, net yeah. gaiters. If you double, you can double insulate those just so that turn it like you know they're long enough to cover your face and your neck. So if you fold them over and turn them inside out, you make double layer fabric. Um, one thing that I've been trying to do is just when I know when I'm going somewhere more public, like a grocery store or something like that, I would wear a, I have s several SA gear. I don't know if you ever heard of that company. Uh, they make some pretty inexpensive and very nice, um, net gators for inexpensive and they have some really cool designs. Um, that would be a good alternative to a mask if you wanted to find something, even if you already had something laying around that you could use. Yeah. Cool. All right. So other things we published, the defense targets, ready ship target. Um, we met Danny uh, Pickle. Uh, I don't know if Pickle's going to join us tonight. Uh, Pickle and I went down to high speed gear a couple years ago for a big uh, event that they had where we did a factory tour at high speed gear. And uh, that was half of it. And the other half was Sig Sauer had brought a couple uh, firearms. So we did classroom on the uh, Virtus patrol rifle, the MCX and the, uh, P320X5, we went out to, uh, what was it called? Spartan Ranch, I think, a facility. And Danny at Defense Targets brought a bunch of targets. So after that event, he sent uh, he sent Alan one of his uh, ready ship targets. Uh, that, that's really cool. It fits in a little, uh, one of the larger, uh, what is it called? Priority mail boxes. And ships straight to your front door with the stand and uh the upper section, uh, as well as like a little mini, uh, what's it called? I IPSC, whatever that the competitive target is, um, a mini version of that silhouette that, uh, you know, it's an AR 500 steel, uh, target that you can shoot at. And you can also order like a little flapper, like the hostage target that sits over the shoulder. Um, so you can practice bounce, bounce, bounces around by side to side. As yeah. As you get yeah. It. You just have to supply a single two by four to make that work. So that review just posted nice. uh, two days ago. Um, so that's good. You know, one of Alan's reviews. Um, uh, this past weekend, I got together with uh, uh, the other JJ that, that's local to me here, the, the Humvee Whisperer. Uh, I helped him pick up a couple helmet tops. Uh, in central North Carolina and drive them down towards the coast to Corey at uh, KPJ Military Customs uh, to, to deliver. And uh, so we see a couple of those Humvees, uh, uh, a really cool build that he did uh, in that uh, episode 13 this week, as well as 30 some different special forces Humvees that he has in his warehouse that he's going to be selling here shortly. So yeah, those I saw that picture. I was amazed on how many he had out there. Yeah, yeah, it was the hair just stood up on my arms thinking about walking <laughs> in that building with all the the cool special forces Humvees everywhere. So, so that yeah. that was a neat experience. A pretty cool video. Um, Trey edited. So we were talking about when Clover showed up that uh, Trey got promoted to be an editor now. So uh, AJ <laughs> wrote this uh, Peltor Tactical. Uh, hearing protection uh, at ear pro review and uh, that was the first one that, that trey went in and and kind of hardcore edited on so uh good work there thanks for your help on that and uh my pleasure 
it's pretty cool ear pro if you're interested in something that has the bluetooth connectivity and is a little higher end than than a lot of the stuff the howard Layton and, and others that that most people wear um that that's a pretty cool uh the the tactical 500 is their kind of higher end version of that active yeah. protection headset and we do and have to probably Remember that we do have the review for the the Peltor 100 and the Peltor 300 as well. Right. So we pretty much we have the the three uh, the three ear protection uh, yeah. reviews over there. So. I think this is the second or third review of the 500 that we posted as well. So we've got the a couple different opinions from different people who have tried those Peltor uh, hearing mm-hmm. protection. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, wrapping up the things that, that we've reviewed recently, that Streamlight Stinger Switchblade. I just filmed this one yesterday and uh, published it last night. So if you like funky work lights that are magnetic and have hooks where you can hang them and, and can ride in the uh, behind the back <laughs> wheel, I'm telling you, this thing was under the back quarter panel of my Humvee for a month and a half. Like not in the bed of the, the vehicle, but on where the tire is up underneath. It was tucked up in there where I was working on installing a backup camera and just forgot about it. And a month and a half later, I found it. It was like, oh, my God, I've driven hundreds of miles. This thing didn't bounce out, and it still works like a champ. So, you know, that was that – was, an, an interesting lapse in judgment on my part, but it proved out that you know, this thing's pretty durable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the ma- and the magnet obviously works. Well, you know, that's a funny thing is it's an aluminum body on the Humvee, and it wasn't actually stuck to anything. It was just sitting where it was mm. kind of trapped, <laughs> a, a good bounce, and it would have fallen out. So it's amazing with the stiff suspension and. Um, I get, it proves I drive like an old woman, I guess. Hey, Jeff, Reed's in the green room. Want you to add him back in? Oh, oh, and Toby's here too. Let's see. I'll add Toby, and let me go get Reed. Let him back in. All right, <laughs> and he's back. He's back. Hey, he's All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah. So, um, so that covers all the recent stuff we've published. Um, as far as who, who's got something that, that you're working on that you want to talk about, you know, just a real quick kind of, we want to tease people. We don't want to give it all away. Well, I guess uh, that's kind of got to be me. Uh, I have a couple right. of things. Uh, one of the things that I've been working on, it kind of tags into the pandemic uh, emotion that everybody's running through what, right now. Uh, we have the uh, Henry U.S. Survival Kit over here. And uh, it, it's the rifle that you can, you know, put away into the uh, stock itself. Uh, but the biggest and the best part of the whole kit is that it comes with all of the necessary pack uh, items that you might need to survive out in the wild. Uh, you know, it's got a fire starter. It's got a, a straw for that has a filter on it uh, that is over here. So, so that's that's your filter right there. Then we have the fire starter package with uh, some tinder and stuff in it. Um, you have the paracord. Um, it, this is a um, hundred feet of paracord for you know doing um, for trapping or for for you know if you need to uh, tie up a sling or something. Uh, it also has a SWAT T tourniquet um, mesh that you can stretch it and then you tie it up and it and it becomes its own uh, tourniquet. Um, uh, one of the other good things about it is it has uh, you know a little survival knife, uh, you know flip knife that that is actually pretty sharp and, and works very good. Um, of course, it has uh, food rations. This is the Daytrex, and it's a uh, one thousand calorie uh, ration. I'm I'm gonna need that back if we're if we're stuck in the houses for long enough. I run out of food. I'm gonna need that back. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's with me. You're done, and and. <laughs> And it's got the Mylar blanket. So, uh, you know, this is truly like the, the very basic package out of supply, uh, including the rifle, um, which all of the items that are you're going to need to survive out there. So, so it, it truly is a great package for you to start out. Uh, you will need to add a whole bunch more rations if you really want to be out there longer. But it gives you an idea. And uh, 
And, you know, the rifles, it shoots, it, it performs probably not as much as we would like it, but it actually does shoot depending on what kind of ammo you have. Uh, you will be yeah. able to get some squirrels. Awesome. So, so, so that's the one. And, and there's already a teaser preview on that one on the website uh, and that we have a video also. So yeah. there you have it. Awesome. Yeah, I'm All looking right. forward to seeing that full review. Yeah. That'll be good. Who else got something right. in the works? I got a couple, three items, uh, firearms that should be delivered <clears throat> next week. I've got uh, the Inner Ordnance Hellfire, which is the uh, – Five inch, nine millimeter PCC. Then I've got um, the Aero Survival pistol from T and W, which is another small barrel, small short barrel, barrel um, nine millimeter PCC pistol. Then I've got a three and a half inch barrel, forty five, uh, nineteen eleven coming in from Devil Dog Arms. So. In the next couple few weeks, I should have plenty of different things to be reviewed. So that'll be that'll be fun. That's awesome. I know what assuming that I can get ammo for all this stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I don't know what it is about Devil Dog Arms that I I don't know why, but I just want one. I've seen them <laughs> at shows, and you know they're like they're 1911s typically, and it's like, all right, what yeah. what's so special about it? I don't know. But something I don't like nineteen elevens. I, I I personally like, don't. But a three and a half inch nineteen eleven that you can get in nine millimeter and carry. Now that's mm -hmm. something that would be a nineteen eleven that I'd be interested in in, in using because I could carry yeah. it and it's you know I'm not a nineteen eleven guy typically. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like Reed's getting set up to show us some of his latest projects. So I'm excited yeah, to see is. that. While we're waiting on him to dial in his camera angles, um, I, I just want to say thanks to uh, Budget and, and Steve, the Tactical Nacho and Gun Cleaners. And uh, let's see, Toby had, uh, I, I guess before he joined us, he said hi in there in the chat. Uh, we don't know you're there unless you say something. So thanks for speaking up and saying hi. Um, I'm kind of still learning how to run these and, uh, and and I forget to check things sometimes. So forgive me if you ask a question and I don't see it, maybe someone else here will, will catch me on it and say something about it. But please um, it, ask questions as we're talking about reviews that are coming or things that we've done recently. Um, let us know uh, what questions or thoughts you have about that. And, and Trey, it looks like, uh, uh, it looks like Buck is is uh, set to. I don't know that he's offering you forty five for that uh, Devil Dog Arms review. Yeah, maybe he's well, just Buck's, saying if you send me the gun, I have ammo to shoot it. Well, see, Buck lives about half an hour from me, and he shoots up at the uh, shooting club. That he's a member of the club that I'm at, so uh, awesome. he'll, there's a good chance that he'll uh, get to shoot it. You no, know, for sure. That's fantastic. All right. Well, Appreciate the comment there. Oh, Reed is setting up lighting even. He's getting fancy yeah, on this. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are, are you, you ready to the truck? The <laughs> All right. Well, well I'm going to put you on the camera. You can tell us what you're doing. All right. Um, basically, I'm just going to show you what I'm doing right now, which is basically modifying a Older version of this of the uh, rubber duck four x four skid plate kit, which basically can close the entire underbody of the truck. Hmm. Um, that and there's a uh, another setup um, that uh, a guy named Jeremy Johnson that uses it, that's on our Humvee forum a lot online. He uh, has been marketing with marketing some underbody skids that are absolutely phenomenal in, as far as fitment and you know quality of uh, fabrication. Uh, his awesome. his company called Safety Third Safety Third Customs. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And if anyone yeah. saw the uh, episode thirteen of Show Us Your Humvee this week, uh, we were down at Safety Third um, picking up those Humvee hardtops. So, uh, so yeah, we know Jeremy. He's he's a cool guy. Yeah, he's a real good guy. I've been talking with him for a while. Um, he uh, set me up with these a while back when he was first cutting them, and I did a little bit of R and D. As far as fitment goes for my particular truck, and uh, I can't, I couldn't be happier with what I try to accomplish. My truck goes harder than most. 
<laughs> uh, I'll say that. Um, so I don't, uh, I don't really take it easy when it comes to things these days. Um, yeah. That was riveted on there one time. But what I was going to show is, as we all know, under these trucks, there's a lot of exposure to the most important part. Um, as you can see here, I've had a close encounter with a rock a couple times. Right. Um, wow. There's a lot of different things like that where you have a lot of underbody protection. You need it. Where I've actually, I mean, very close calls to really doing some serious damage to my truck. Um, the most recent thing to do with this is because this, this particular application was it was made for like a newer model H1. Right. Uh, it's pretty much, there's, there's no way to put it on this particular truck without doing your own homework. So I have to basically drop the frame and grind holes and et cetera, et cetera. But once it's complete, it'll enclose the entire number of the truck. Wow. Um, uh, unfortunate thing about the, um, I had eventually been trying to design a universal hydro system for Humvees that anybody could just buy. And my, com my, my name brand would put it together and then you could just bolt it on your truck and it would still be a reliable driving um, hydraulic system which the idea was great but once i got into the meat and potatoes of it it just wasn't going to be worth it to the consumer so right. i looked more at what i could do to modify the steering setup not only would it tuck better up inside of this area here where it normally is i don't know if you can see that or not yeah. um it goes right through there that's usually where your steering line goes but also it utilizes what's on the market today and it would be extremely affordable for anyone and i could usually use something as simple as a core of like your worn out Pittman arm to make you one that would never break and that would never wear out. Right. And it would just be something that would be marketable for everyone to, to use. So that's what I, that's what's in the work for me is mainly revamping the factory steering system for the older model and then a ten ten thirty eights. And pretty much, pretty much any truck can use this. Um, it's all pretty much the same. You can pretty much give me what you need to do, what you want to do. And I can make these tie rods that are basically bulletproof. I've stood up right. my truck on a set of 42s. Um, I'm literally, my, my entire weight of my truck was on my front two tires because I'd just gone off the edge of a rock face. And my both wheels of folk were completely forced outwards in two completely different directions. And these tie rods didn't break or bend. Oh, so cool, and that's that's the bolt and connections and the machined out uh, connections to the portals and everything. So uh, future future strength of steering is not only that, but you're not going to have any play in your steering after something that traumatic to your steering system, which is right. a big thing that's been killing Humvees for a long time. Uh, you can go and watch video after video of mine and see my front two wheels just dancing in the air because there's so much play in them from being beat up. Right. So I know that's any, cool. something that everyone, everyone could take advantage of. Yeah. And, and I know something we started working on uh, six or eight months ago that the most common question I see for Humvees after the basic mechanical stuff is what kind of wheels and tires can I put on? Right. Um, so that's something that, that you've got a little bit more insight into that than I do. So I'm hoping we can get that documented here shortly. I think that's going to be useful. I've got a lot of work done on it already. We, before we, before everything went down in my life and literally an, my own version of an epidemic happened, yeah. um, I, uh, I got a pretty good bit, bit of that, of that article completed. So I'm, um, I'm real close to finishing it, but there was a lot of things that I, I knew that people were going to ask about that I was trying to find a way to incorporate yep. in that without yep. just putting, you know, putting so much in there that it was going to be, it was just too much information at one time. Because some yeah, things, need, you know, like you said, some things need to be separated in different articles. So yeah. it's, it's it's finding out what those materials are and how I need to do it. And more, I might need to do one on wheels and tires, another one on this, because they really are work together with this truck so much. Yeah, uh, it's going to have to be. At least you push your articles. truck more than most people, so you're a little better qualified to to speak on that than most people I know. So looking forward right. to seeing that. And, yes, and and the other stuff work yeah, excellent. Thank you, sir. And uh, I want to come back for you to just give a brief mention of the other thing you told me about in email, but we'll come back to that. Um, let's see. Jose Juan has spoken. Let's uh, Toby, you have anything coming that you want to talk about? I think we yeah. lost. No, yeah. 
Yeah, I had to I had to unmute and make sure I didn't want to accidentally be speaking through some of the other good content, man. It, it, you would have to go to me right after read, and after that, just amazing stuff, man. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> I'm supposed to follow that. That's just. That's I appreciate just, your compliment, man. Really. Yeah. Okay, but before I'm going to go climb under my wife, I'm going to go climb under my wife's centra. Hang on a second, let me go. (laughs) Before you go, I just want to say thank you for what you just did right before coming in. The reason you were late coming in is you were doing a free training for new gun owners, and that is an awesome uh, service that you provided. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Potatoes of owner firearms, right there is gun safety. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I didn't sign in to the to make comments or anything, but I was watching <laughs> as well. So, oh man, thanks. Uh, I appreciate yeah, it. Man. Yeah, just go. Just it, it, it probably mean a lot more to me if you, were, you push people over to su- subscribe, like, ring the bell, yeah. all that kind of good stuff. Because that's you know a couple comments, get a little engagement, so that it starts pushing up in the content. But um, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. I I'm, I don't want to talk too much about that. You know, so I know this is the gear report thing, but yeah, I'm I'm getting sure. ready to, to focus quite a few videos across the next few weeks to do some education. Um, you know, I volunteer with the American Red Cross. I volunteer in my community and I do things like that. But right now, I'm I'm on lockdown. You know, and, and our state yeah. just just issued the law, and so anything I can do to help is oh, is what I'm going to do. Uh, and one of the things I'm uh, that I have the ability to do is since I'm an NRA training counselor, as well as you know, like Trey, I went to a lot of advanced training. I have that ability to share that knowledge, uh, particularly now in this this um, trying time when everybody's kind of panicking and freaking out to give them that. In addition, I'm going to be doing some some kind of hardcore stuff with some of the uh, executive protection and uh, some of the military and law enforcement communities that I'm uh, involved with out on Facebook and some different groups. I'm going to do some more um, involved kind of ninja Viking tactical level training stuff for them uh, for free over the next few weeks, including one Sunday night. I can ping you guys offline if you're interested in um, interested in joining that one, but I'm trying to obviously keep the viewership to that one down to a low because yeah. it, you know, it can be used for malicious or nefarious intent. Right. Yeah. So, so anyways, so all that said, um, I'm working on that Titan reviews, pretty much the biggest thing I've got going on right now. I mean, I, I'm down to a minimum on, on items I've got in my queue, uh, the Titan rifle and everything around that Titan rifle. So, uh, Dover was, was gracious enough to send me a bipod, which I haven't gotten yet, but I'm going to have to review the bipod. I'll have to review the, um, the Caldwell mount that'll go for that, that Titan rifle. I'll have to review the rifle itself. Um, I received a, uh, Crimson Trace optic to go on top of it. Uh, a red dot as well as a, a glass. Uh, so I'll have to review each one of those individually. Um, and I'll probably spin off a few other little items as relates to it, like maybe reviewing if I can get out and go and train with, um, I'm going to really try to go out and take uh, Jaeger's um, September class for um, sniper, as well as a friend of mine who's who's out in the Nashville, Tennessee area, who also does training as far as DDM. It's I shouldn't say sniper. It's not called sniper anymore. It's DDM, designated defensive marksman. Um, I'm going to go try to get some of them and do a review of their class. So I'll probably end up spinning off quite a bit of content from just that one rifle and everything around it. Right. But at the moment, that's pretty much all I've got. And Q is that one rifle and the accoutrement to go with it. Awesome. Uh-huh. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that. Any mm-hmm. Any questions from anyone? No. All right. bipod, the bipod's in the mail, Toby. <laughs> Thank you, you, Dover. Listen, man, you're the man. I appreciate it. Reed got kicked out again. You got to send back, get, get Reed back in. You need to fly on over and help me do it, Dover. <laughs> back in, please, he says. All right. Yeah. Um, if anyone I knows. Know, I'm experimenting with this application. I just. <laughs> oh, no, that's <laughs> so fine. I'm trying to get y'all some good content, but I, I don't know how to use this quite yet, so forgive me. Yeah. I can comment on your anyone, DDM program, though. If you'd like, um, the DDM program you were speaking of, is it the, uh, the one with the Department of State? So the guy who I've received training from in the past is, um, you know, I don't want to mention his name, but he's one of the trainers for um, EPI, uh, as well as several other, including some of the Department of State um, schools. And he's one of the guys who was featured or he's one of the guys in the background who was one of the 12 strong from the movie 12 strong. He's uh, he, he was he was real hardcore to preach whenever he was teaching the course that I went to that you can't say sniper anymore because it's politically incorrect. You have to be a designated defensive marksman because you're trying to right. stop the threat. You're not trying to snipe somebody and kill them, you know. Right. So, yeah. so, yes, was, he used some of that of curriculum. The, I was part of that uh, program. Awesome. And graduated from their DDM course for the Department of State um, and this past year, actually. Uh, 
So uh, one of the guys, I worked with two of them. I probably know the gentleman you're talking about, if not uh, most of the 12 you're talking, <laughs> most of the people okay. you're talking about, they're involved in that program. Um, Chuck, does Chuck, does Chuck sound familiar? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Okay. He's the man. He's you know, my buddy. Yes, yeah. but um, yeah, those guys. Uh, I know at least the instructors were with me. Uh, they will definitely remember me. Um, I wasn't there for very long for family reasons, but um, there's we can definitely brainstorm back and forth if you'd like about the about the curriculum because that was a ex- excellent course. I had more fun at that shooting course than even Scout Sniper School in the Marine Corps. Well, my problem uh, is he tried to go through that. He tried to go through that whole program. But we had uh-huh. so many shooters who were inexperienced and didn't have the rifle zeroed ahead of time that we got drugged down. It was a two-day course. He only did two uh-huh. days. And we got kind of drugged down in the mire of, of at least common denominator kind of thing. So it sounds like I need to get come out and see you instead of going and seeing those guys. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I'm telling you right now that I know how to do this. <laughs> so uh-huh. We can work together, man. I mean, I'm telling you, we can put together some awesome stuff. They you may be my guy. Those guys. So, Where do you live? I mean, not I exactly. Alabama. <gasps> within driving distance and my wife has a friend. Hey, you know, hey Jeff, jumping. can we get these guys like a romantic dinner together or something? Yeah. I think they're going to do that whether we say it okay. or not. Okay. Oh, unfortunately, uh, what was it? Uh, Waffle House declared that they were closed. So oh. we can't do it right now. Hey, so Waffle House is too low key for me. If it's going to yeah. be romantic, there has to be steak involved, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Denny's. Denny's. You can Denny's. get steak Denny's. at Waffle House. It might not Denny's. be very good, but they do offer steak. Denny's has steak. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. easily our best broadcast yet. So all joking aside, though, right. Reed. All joking aside, I may hit you up instead of instead of those other guys because since you're already an author for Gear Report, it might it might benefit Gear Report at large. Well, well, I'll be glad to, you, to partake my knowledge and uh, anything that I can't, um, I can't help you with. I know who I can call to get it. Yeah, so nice. I can pretty much anything you need. I can get. I can get it. I've okay. been in the. I've been in this field for over ten years. I need skills. So, I mean, can you give me that? <laughs> I got that too. So okay. you just let me know. I need good jokes too. Yeah, no, I, I got bad jokes, jokes, bro. I got dad jokes. jokes. I got dad jokes. <laughs> Jokes, uh, dad jokes, you know, I'm a dad, so I could use some pointers. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. We made it around the room except Clover. Uh, Chris, you have anything uh, that is going to drop soon that you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, probably the next one to drop. Uh, something that I started working on since we talked last. I've actually had it here for, mm-hmm. oh, good Lord, a month. Just haven't had uh, been working through the queue. Uh, we're all familiar with doing and, and hadn't had time yet and broke it out a couple of days ago. And that was the uh, Manus X10 Elite training device. Now, something kind of unique that I'm doing that you don't see a lot of is using it for archery. I saw so, that. I, that was really interesting, yeah. you know, blending it over to the other. Yeah. So um, have really had a, it's been a while since I've broken out the bow and, and done some, you know, done some archery. So the last couple of days, it's been really fun playing around with that thing. So. Uh, you know, and uh, hopefully sometime next week that'll uh, that'll drop on Gear Report. Awesome! I'd love to get with you sometime and uh, steal some of your skills. I want to sharpen some archery skills. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I can do it. Cool. So I can tell I you how to be a terrible archer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So ah. running around in your Robin Hood tights doesn't count as just being an archer. Just oh, well then I then I have nothing to offer. Then I'm sorry. Just yeah. Pull the string <laughs> back. Pull the string back. Let it go. There ain't nothing to it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Don't overthink it. I guess. Right. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. most. I'm sure there's that. some tricks of the trade that you can give up, and then I I know that I have a few of those myself. So. Most is patience, repetition. You know, right. consistency. Same as mm-hmm. with same as with shooting. I mean, same right. as with shooting a pistol or a rifle. Same premise. Excellent. Yeah. So from, from the people watching the stream, uh, let, let me know what you're looking for as far as, you know, more archery content. Uh, we, I don't know. We could really do less. We don't do much archery content. Um, it's something I've been open to and I've talked to some brands about, but, uh, haven't had, uh, a lot of writers that were eager to do it. So if that's something that, that, uh, any of you guys are interested in doing more of, well, I mean, I am, uh, I'm certified in archery same way as I'm certified in everything else. Yeah. Um, not only, uh, youth coach for many years, but, you know, instructor 
Uh, I train archery instructors for 4-H here in the state of Texas. So, um, you know, if you get the opportunity, Jeff, from some archery companies, you know, um, it's, it's within my wheelhouse. It's not anything that I, I enjoy the crap out of it. Probably even enjoy archery more than, than fi the firearm side of things, but yeah. I don't do it as often for whatever reason. Um, and probably because you can't, and that's why it's taken, mm -hmm. you know, I've spent the last two days. I mean, you sling 20 or 30 arrows, you're kind of tired after that. And especially when you're playing around with, uh, archery equipment that you want to make sure that, okay, is this, is this helping me, you know, be accurate is, you know, all of this other stuff. And, you know, you sling 20, 30 arrows and you're tired, you're fatigued, right? And it's okay. Am I off because this equipment's crap or am I off because I'm fatigued? So, uh, right. it takes a little more time than, than testing out doing T and E on firearm related stuff, unfortunately. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Understood. I uh, mean, you mentioned Mantis. Um, we've had a good relationship with Mantis over the years. I actually pulled this off of uh, a little uh, P226 pistol that uh, SIG sent over one of their air guns that uh, when you put the cartridge in it, just don't put any uh, of the projectiles in it. It makes a really neat little trainer that will cycle the slide and give you a little bit of that recoil feel. Um, and this is the original Mantis X. And uh, for, for the writers, if you haven't seen it yet, I circulated a um, I circulated a spreadsheet a little while ago where if you are interested in reviewing any of the Mantis X products, they've got a range of them. The X10 Elite that, uh, that Clover is working on will do everything. And then they have, I think it's an X8 that's not even listed on the website that I could find that's just for archery. And they have one for, for shotgun. And they have a, a dry fire training version. I mean, they've got a whole bunch of different ones. So if anyone's interested in... Working with those, be sure you enter that in that spreadsheet for the Gear Report writers, for the people watching. I mean, let me know if any of those are more interesting or less interesting to you, and we'll uh, be sure we get someone uh, set up to, to look into those for you. Well, it appears that, you know, from what I was looking, the best, the best bang for the buck is the X10 Elite. Because, I mean, it will yeah. do everything across the board, comes with everything you need, and it's not... You know, you're talking about buying two or three different units, depending on what you want to do. So, I mean, that's for yep. Yep. for the true outdoorsman. That's probably the better. That's probably the better purchase. Um, and then another thing to mention is, I mean, they the the device works in conjunction. If anybody is is not familiar with it out there, works in conjunction with the apps on your phone. And so, the uh, archery and the shotgunning app are different than the rifle, rifle pistol. So. Uh, yeah. You do got to make sure you got some room on your phone to run those apps. Everything works Bluetooth. Don't need a internet connection or anything crazy like that. Right. The most, under, the most underutilized skill or rather tool is dry firing. And most people say all this cool stuff about all the gear they have and uh, talk about all the shooting they did when they went down range, but they're not working on the fundamentals. I mean, all professionals out there, they're, what really makes them pros is they do it until they can't get it wrong. Can't Just like that, that device right there. It's not a real gun, though. That one's not a firing function. That's a, uh, that's I'm a not to show, I'm, Yeah, I'm not allowed to show. You, live streams, you're not allowed to show live or real firearms. You can only show inert or training tools. But man, to say, it's drive, it, it does give you the drive fire capability because it has the the reset. But you know, I still do drive fire with my actual firearm as well, the one that I carry every day particularly. But, yep, you're right. The fundamentals, if you don't practice your draw stroke, if you don't practice your, your drive firing, then you're going to be that guy that every time oh, something's wrong with my pistol. It just hold it. It's throwing I've been really it. fortunate. I've, uh, I've been really fortunate. Um, I, lo I love soaking up information from anybody who wants to give it. Um, I don't try to pretend that I know everything. I've got a lot of experience and training, um, but I'm a human being and, par and skills are perishable. And the more you stay away from them, the worse you get at it. So any mm -hmm. chance I get to soak up some information from somebody, I've been, I've have been really fortunate to uh, been with some really, really talented individuals and trainers over the years, whether it have been with pistols, rifles, you name it. So because of that, you know, I've, I've learned a lot of really cool uh, tools of the trade. And dry firing by far has been the most useful tool as far as marksmanship goes because you can pay attention, especially if something that gives you feedback and can add a little bit more realism to it without having to send a bullet down range. Uh, right. can get you into the repetition of how to handle a firearm properly 
how to how to draw, how to present, how to mm-hmm. squeeze the trigger in, in a stressful and make your own stressful situations. You can think outside the box the numerous ways um, with dry fire weapons because you don't have to worry about projectiles. You still mm-hmm. need to practice your fundamentals, your safety fundamentals. Just because you're not having a, a live firearm doesn't mean you shouldn't handle exactly the same wood you would with a live one because those mm-hmm. will train over into the actual live handle if you don't do that. And one, and one thing I want to add as far as dry fire goes, um, obviously I dry fire, I try to dry fire every day. I, I probably average five days a week, to be honest. But um, when you're out there dry firing, if you're going to conceal carry, dry fire from the draw as well. Utilize your holster, get used to raising that garment, getting the draw, because if, mm-hmm. if all you do is shoot the gun and then you actually have to draw, you get hung up on the garments or whatever, utilize that practice, getting off the X, doing reloads and all, I mean, practice every single kind of reload that there is as well. You never know when you're going to have to use them. So utilize that time. And some of the best advice I've been given is you're getting free up repetition every time you pull your weapon out of your holster. Mm-hmm. So right. you draw that thing as fast as you can like somebody's trying to kill you. And you do that every single time, no matter what. And people are going to look at you like you're silly if you do something like that. But you know what? It's your life, man. Who cares? You you They're and not going to laugh if you save their life. Right, exactly. And, and that's another thing is, is train like you fight. So when you start making a mistake because you reach for your firearm, you get hung up. Guess what? In a stressful environment, it's going to happen. And okay. when it does, you need to fight through the mistake. Because if you don't, you're going to do exactly the same thing in a stressful situation or you'll freeze and you won't know what to do. So fighting through those mistakes is a huge thing that I took away from a lot of training that I've experienced. And, and I don't want to make this into a dry fire conversation. Sorry, Jeff. But one more thing also is most people, especially if they're new and they're new gunners, a lot of them out there right now and you're practicing, you don't understand what adrenaline and shortness of breath and heart rate due to your mechanics so it sounds crazy but do 10 or 20 jumping jacks then draw your weapon and dry fire and see if you can keep your mechanics same and without that muzzle jumping all over the place because unless you really know what adrenaline and an accelerated heart rate does to your mechanics if you've never experienced that then once again in a crap hits the fan scenario you're going to have all of those variables out there yeah. Absolutely. Since since there's all this talk about dry firing, I feel the need to put out a public service announcement. Please do not dry fire your bow or crossbow. <laughs> right. yeah. 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 Yes. Now, do they have an equivalent of a snap cap for bows or no, or arrows or no? It just kind of it is what it is. Uh, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> no. For all those out there that are the innovators in the world, a dry fire device for you know archery would be pretty cool. That yeah. would be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jose Juan, I see you uh, You did the quick change when you were off camera. Yeah. You know, since uh, since YouTube doesn't let you touch real firearms, you switched out the one behind you when the camera was off. So let me bring the camera back to you, and you can uh, yeah. tell us about that you can one. Point. That, uh, the review <laughs> is coming up. And, well, it's that one right there. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, let me get the camera a little bit closer just because this one is really, really cool. Um, oh, yeah. that I know that, that a lot of you guys would like. Um, so you're talking about, you know, the marksman rifles and everything. And, and this is probably a, a really good sample of something that would be kind of like a ri- uh, marksman rifle, you know, but this one's the, the small caliber uh, brother or cousin, I guess. And this comes from Volkwarten. And uh, this is the Summit action rifle that they have which is the the straight pull um, uh, action a bolt action and uh, it comes in their uh, inferno chassis that they have for the 1022 um, and, and and this is uh, one of the rifles that I have been working for several years um, in order to get uh, because uh, the manufacturing of it or the creator of the of the action itself was a different brand and bull quartz and acquired it in the past couple of years and they started to they did some tweaks to it because they had some flaws and they have you know finally brought it out uh, between last year and this year and uh now we have it to, to test it out and uh, uh man it really is an excellent rifle, and 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 I, if anybody's ever participated in, um, I don't know, one of the 
uh, trainings that I've done. Uh, it's over at the Project Appleseed, uh, which gives you the history, a little bit of the U.S. and, and how it started. But it also gives you the marksman training. And, uh, man, uh, this is something as a bolt action where it would be great for something like that or the, oh, yeah. or the new uh, NRL, the National Rifle League, the, the 22 uh, version of, of the... Uh, of that uh, uh, league of uh, tournaments and, and competitions that you can participate with this. Yeah. Uh, it really shoots great. Yeah, I'm looking it's, forward to seeing that one. I know that is a rifle that it was a couple years in the making setting that review up. So it was a, it was pretty exciting when that one showed up and uh, I've handled it. I don't think I've shot that one. So I, I want to go out with you next time you shoot it. Why don't we go this weekend? We'll go out and shoot that. Uh, you know, yeah, we can be six feet apart, I guess. Sure. We can do that. Yeah. I'm not going to tell anyone any, anyway, but yeah, we, we should get together with Alan. I'm going to commit to go to Alan's this weekend, maybe on Sunday. So maybe you can come with me. We'll go out to quarter horse arms and squeeze yeah. off some rounds. And if yeah. anyone people, wants to meet people, us there, people, people group on twenty-two caliber rifles, man. I mean, those. Uh, I, a buddy of mine is he's he's just a plinker every once in a while, and he got himself this little semi-automatic twenty-two caliber rifle. Was, I mean, I was amazed at what he could do with that thing at a hundred yards, uh, just because yeah. just plinking and how many rounds he could put accurate accurately on target. And I'm like, yes. I don't think with that with that thing the way it's so quick and the, how cheap ammunition is and all the other stuff that you can and, the, and just the versatility of it the com how compact you can get these things i mean it's a it's a great caliber to play with especially if you're just if it's a survival thing heck heck as a home yeah. defense as many rounds as you can put down range yeah yeah it really depends what you have and and you know off from the the 22 long rifle uh, uh project that i have on on the gear report uh, website uh, we've we reviewed a whole bunch of the 22 rifles in there, and uh, we've had a couple of um, manufacturers of the 1022, uh, you know, style of rifles that have provided their their weapons for us to review, and and man, they shoot excellent. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. the only thing I'm concerned about is, uh, unfortunately, our buddy Dustin was also sent one of those to review. Uh, yes. And Top Shot Dustin. Um, yeah. So your groups have got to be good because he's publishing a review also of the same rifle. And yeah. if your groups aren't good, he's not going to let you hear the end of it. Oh yeah, no, the groups on That's this one are, 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 are pretty good. <laughs> I, I barely started doing the breaking program uh, process, and and I took groupings out of it just to give me an idea of how it was going to work. And uh, yeah, I have them some somewhere in here. Hold on. Yeah, you had that clipboard up there earlier. I saw it. So this this Dustin you speak of is he like a good shooter or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will have to get Dustin in here. Uh, maybe I can persuade him to join us one weekend. Uh, uh, one, one Friday. Yeah. Well, th this is this is just a, a little bit of a teaser, and and it's just uh, kind of uh, some of the groupings, and this is just the barely beginning of the breaking pro uh, process. Okay, okay. so. So you, you can see, good. yeah, you, you see how, how that's going to go. Like I said, this is just barely breaking. Uh, I've been shooting it a little bit more, but I have not taken any more groupings. And, and I will set yeah. it up again in the shooting rail that I have over here behind me. I don't know if you guys have seen that before. Yeah, is that, uh, that's the high score machine rest, right? Yeah, it's the high score dual dampener uh, shooting rest. Right, which reminds me. Uh, you guys, if I don't send another spreadsheet out to the writers here pretty soon, um, High Score is willing to provide. They've got some new products if we want to review them. So check out their product catalog. Um, if, if you're out in the audience and you want to go check out the, the High Score shooting accessories, and they have stand, target stands, shooting rest, a whole bunch of different stuff. Let yeah. us know what you'd be most interested in seeing a review of. And we'll get some of those products out to our various writers to you know get some articles and videos up on those. Yeah, I, I believe we have five of their uh, of the products that they manufacture for sure. We have a number of them right now. They've yeah. been a great company to work with. Everything they have, sense worked real well. We have this uh, shoot and rest. Uh, we have uh, shoot and elevate rest. Uh, we have mm -hmm. their their field tripod uh, triangulated. Uh, uh, shooting rest also the, the table and, that's awesome the, the table uh and then yeah. we have two 
yeah, I believe two more rests that the are pistol for, rest, right? for pistols that, that yep. I use for the reviews for just for accurate cool. purposes. Yeah. All right. Any anyone else have anything coming soon that they want to talk about? Because we're about out of time here. No, I'm going to show you something that I'm going to I'm going to shoot a video on this this week. You can see this little orange thing. It's uh, it's got a USB port in the bottom to charge. And um, it's from uh, UTS. This is something you can get at Brownells in their uh, emergency and survival equipment section. And it opens up and it's a lighter, but you got a little power button here when you push it. I'm hoping this shows up on camera well. Let me get a dark background here. You Put yourself little, on camera so we can see it bigger. Should I burn myself on it? See what it looks yeah. like? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't just, think I want to do that. Put it in front of your shirt. Your, your shirt is black, Jess. <laughs> But yeah, yeah but put yourself big on the on the screen so we can see just you. Ah, yeah. See, that's why you're here. You got you're not just that, eye candy. That helps. Well, I am eye candy, but you're right. I'm not just <laughs> eye candy. I'm just <laughs> eye candy. Yeah. So I'm gonna let me see if this. Uh, I haven't actually done much physical testing with it. We'll take a little piece of paper here and see what happens. Let me put that in there. Don't try oh, this. Yeah. Time, that lights that sucker. I'm gonna burn the house down here. That'll make, yeah, no, don't that'll do make the missus happy. Oh, now that's a big ember. I got to figure out what to do with it. I'm just going to hold it. Lick it. it. Stick it in my mouth. Yeah. 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 You know, what? more than once I, I have uh, made a poor judgment when someone said that. So I'm going to show good judgment today <laughs> and, and not do that. But this is coming. Uh, UTS. I don't remember the exact name of it. A uh, pretty cool little thing. And... Uh, and you know what? I'm going to show you something else. A little teaser. This, you see my big water jug here. It says uh, Lifesaver down here. And uh, this, I'm eager to get this review done. This is something I'll carry around in the Humvee. Um, it has, that's the pump side. The other side has got a filter. And this sucker will supply filtered water for uh, a whole community in a third world country for like a year. Um, it is an amazing, it looks like just a regular plastic jerry can, but it's actually got a, a really intense filter in it. Uh, you can pressurize it and uh, really awesome life-saving device there. So That is a great item for a bug out vehicle right there. It is, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to shoot a video for that this week. And I, I stuck these earbuds in a little while ago. Uh, I'm going to shoot a video on these pretty soon. These are the Isotunes. The uh, wired, um, they call it Isotunes Pro 2.0. It's a Bluetooth noise canceling earbuds, and these uh, we've got um, we've got these that are wired, and we have a wireless Bluetooth set as well. That uh, actually, one of my kids is finally going to do a review for me. She's been using these, so uh, Sky will shoot a video this week on on these, <laughs> and I'm going to shoot one on the wired version. And the thing that's neat about these is they're designed for a high noise environment. So you've got a really aggressive noise canceling mic. Um, so we're, we're going to get those reviews out. I'm planning on filming a lot of reviews in this coming week. So look for a bunch more of those to come out. I've got something that I think that you'll be interested in. Show us your home V. I'm, I'm upgrading my Hummer. I'm putting myself a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting a tactical mascara mirror on the back end, back side of the um, the the visor. So yeah. I'll be upgrading the the Hummer. So I figured you'd want to see that. So I'll make sure that I present that for you. That's awesome. If you could just shoot a video on it, and we'll get that published. <laughs> You'll get rejected. <laughs> you know, I I still I wasn't kidding. I designed a red rejected sticker for you to put on your H3. And I just oh, haven't read it yet. So maybe I'll cut that this weekend and send it to you. So Reed probably doesn't know when he started doing the Show Us Your Home V, I did a spoof video of Show Us Your Home V, but I did my Hummer H3. And so it was and, and on, on the thumbnail it said it was rejected from Gear Report. He didn't want the video. So you know. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah, before Shot Show I designed I took I took his rejected and made a, a, a decal out of it. I just hadn't I didn't have time to cut it. So I'm gonna have to do that for you. But. 
Awesome. And, and Reed, we got to get some, we got to get together and get some video on your dirty V truck for an upcoming show us your Humvee episode. So we can show it's going to be, it's going to be, I'm waiting on a machinist to get back with me about my drag link. Cause I got a HD mm -hmm. upper I mean, HD drag link that I'm getting mm -hmm. machined to accept a certain type of bolt size. Right. Um, once that happens, my truck will be back on the road again. And yeah. I mean, I've got, I've got a, I mean, it's a pretty intense little setup. I mean, I think a lot yeah. of people are going to like it. You, I think so too. And something to keep in mind is, is we know that, that someone like you is always pushing, breaking stuff, putting new stuff on. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's just get, right. get some video, get it up there. And then when you make some big changes later, we can put in another episode. So it's going to work out. We can talk about that offline. Um, we have gone over by a couple minutes. I hope no one is too disturbed by that, but, uh, I'd like to give everyone, uh, why don't we go kind of clockwise on the screen here. Everyone can just uh, say your goodbyes and where people can find you and your content. And, uh, and then we'll shut her down and uh, reconvene next Friday. So, Jose Juan, you're up. Yes, JJ, thank you for uh, having us uh, with you today. And, uh, yeah, you can find me with Jeff and, and uh, doing gear report stuff. And by with Jeff, he means at least six feet away from Jeff. Right. Especially lately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Ghost. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, Jeff. Uh, yeah, Trey with Ghost Tactical. You can check out all of my stuff. Easiest way to find us is uh, on the internet at ghosttacticalproductions.com. Have links to all of our stuff, including we have a a page directly for all of our gear report reviews on the website. So you can check those out, check out our videos, podcasts, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me, bud. Thanks for being here. Yeah. I got distracted because I was noticing that the way I'm graying here and on the sides, it makes the dark spots kind of look like I've got that boy band cut going, you know, where they like, man, I'm going to have to shave. That now. wasn't so, that wasn't what you were going for? I mean, I totally thought that was what your objective was. Yeah. I mean, that's what it would look like. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Uh, Jeff, Clover. I don't think that you would ever be uh, misled to think that you were a boy band guy. Just saying. Although, this could be a boy band right here, you know? I, I, could, rock, I could rock some boy bandness if I had to. No, I maybe wore, not. I wore maybe a not. Hawaiian shirt as a joke for the boog. So. And I was going to comment on that. And uh, you beat me to it. So, yeah, good good work. It's good all work. about, you know, showing out for the Bogue, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the thing is, though, um, I could wear a Hawaiian shirt and say that, and everyone would just kind of laugh like, <laughs> yeah, sure, what are you going to do? <laughs> you know? Well, uh, honestly, <laughs> people that I see doing it on a regular basis, half of them, I'm like, oh, what the fuck are you going to do? Excuse my language. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's okay. So. But, I, I I was in Air Force. I own it. I know who I am. But. <laughs> well, I know some pretty on point uh, Air Force guys. I'm not gonna lie. I've met some pretty good. So we still so love you, Jeff. You. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Hey, Clover, you want to say your goodbyes? Yeah, great chat once again this week. Thanks for the invite. Hopefully, everybody out there's enjoying these. You can find my stuff obviously on Gear-Report.com uh, or CloverTac.com if you're looking for uh, us on all the various other platforms. Excellent. Wow. That was concise. Well done. Toby. Or take it. Similar, similar to Dover. Thank you very much for the invite. Appreciate you. Let me be a part of the gear report family. You can find my page under the authors at gear report.com. If you want to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the other good stuff you can <laughs> YouTube's the YouTube's and including the link to gear report. You can find it all at mining Ridge armory.com. One word mining Ridge armory. So that reminds me in, in the future. So you guys who know StreamYard that we're using to run this, um, is there a way that I can designate people within StreamYard to have like some administrative rights or whatever? I don't think so. Negative. Don't think so. Okay. Um, nope. Thank you, Buck Stanley, for the uh, for the kind words there. We appreciate it. Yeah. Um, okay, so maybe maybe in a future week, since I forget to do things, links in the comments, maybe we can designate someone to put people's links in the comments when when we're going through this. Um, 
Now, as long as they have moderator status on your YouTube uh, page, any moderator can put links in the chat. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, good. So we'll have to work that out to make this go a little more smoothly in the future. So, uh, Reed, where can people find you if they want more, more Reed? Well, for now, uh, you can look at me, look me up on Instagram at DirtyB90. Um, also, I'm starting a YouTube page uh, for it's the same Dirty V Dirty V90 with a space between Dirty V and 90. Um, okay. It's the more video footage I get, the more I'm going to upload. Right now, I don't have much on there, but there is more coming. But most of my updates are done at Dirty V90 on uh, Instagram. Okay, great. Well, everyone, thanks again for being here uh, on the on the panel discussing uh, all the cool things that have and are about to happen on Gear Report. Thanks for uh, all the folks who showed up uh, to partake through YouTube and uh, for the, the comments and interaction we got there. Uh, so this is going to be at, at least for the for the time being, we're looking at every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. So same time, same place. Uh, come on back and we'll we'll see what's going on. Uh, so it'll be next week at Gear Report. So until then, we'll see you at the range. Thanks, you guys. Yes, sir.